Hi everyone, my name is Kate and I am the Chief Creative Officer at Kiva Planks and I was also a second and third grade teacher so I've had experience using Kiva Planks in my own classroom. My background is in art education so I'm particularly uh, interested in looking at um, architecture as an art form and building them and replicating them with Kiva Planks. So I use Kiva Planks as a great tool for that and I hope that they will help you as well. So I'm excited to share with you some of my expertise and some ways that you can implement engineering concepts and architectural elements into your classroom with Kiva Planks. I have um, a couple of uh, activities that I'm going to show you today and just the basic principles of Kiva Planks and how uh, the ratios work really well with figuring out how to build windows and doors and columns and things like that. So Kiva Planks are a great hands-on tool for learning and creating and especially replicating architectural elements and so I'm going to show you how to make columns cantilevers, roofs, windows, and going over some of the architectural principles like symmetry and cantilevers and uh, things like that. And I want to particularly explore the relationship between Kiva Planks and engineering. I love Kiva Planks because it allows students to explore um, architecture and study architecture from the past, but also allowing them to build and innovate themselves so they can create something new that they might have uh, discovered through building with Kiva Planks. A great exercise to start your students with is something that we call 3D Challenge, which is these, we have these cards that show the, an object from three different views and their challenge is to look at them and think spatially and try to build that with Kiva Planks. So this example that I have here, um, you look at the planks from the side, the front, and the top. And then once they've built that, they can look at the other side and see if they built it correctly. So that's a great warm up for um, students if they have some extra time and allows them to think spatially. This is also great because it introduces students to looking at drawings, like if they were thinking or interested in becoming an architect or an engineer, they would have to look at blueprint drawings or sketches of things and so it helps them expand their knowledge of looking at something from two dimensions and then building it in three dimensions. Another fun way you can incorporate 3D challenges and thinking spatially is to have them design their own. So they could build a structure and then look at it from the top, front, and side view and then try to draw it so their friend could try to build um, what they had uh, drawn. Um, one of the things you might be thinking about is if you only have a, so many planks in your classroom, like 100 or 200, it's fine to work in teams with these exercises, or you could even um, just focus on one architectural element at a time. So each student could have 10 planks, and then they have to try to build a cantilever with just those 10 planks. So you can adapt these activities based on how many planks you have. So some basic building principles with Kiva Planks, I wanted to show you that if you have three stacked this way, that equals the, I guess, the width of, of a Kiva Plank here, and 15 planks stacked this way equals the length, and then if you lay five planks flat, that equals also the length of the planks. So thinking um, when designing buildings or architecture, I like to think in modules by five planks. So if I'm building a house or something, I would probably want to build it either five, 10, or 15 planks um, wide or long, and then I can build each element on top of those five planks. An example of that would be if I was gonna build a column and I would use three planks to make it a nice square and put them on, put them on the plank base and putting them on a base is also nice because then you can move them if you need to scooch something a little closer. And then when building the top of the column, I, I use Kiva planks even as a tool for building that top part. So I put two planks next to this one here 
and then take two and stack it on top of that middle plank. And these planks are um, used as a support for those two on top. And then I might even add two more planks on top of those so I can place three planks there on top. Now it looks strange right now, but when I take my hand and mm, actually I'm gonna put one on top there to add some counterbalance, I can pick that whole element up and set it on top of my columns. And you can see there that the planks are starting to fall this way. So to make it more sturdy, we're going to add And the more you add, the more sturdy it becomes. And that way we've created a full column. So then once you keep adding, you could add another column this way. And, and then when you put those five planks on top like that, it'll create another surface on top and then you could build on there. The top of this column is already an example of a cantilever um, because it's going out and expanding, but we're also adding counterbalance to keep it from falling over. So this is a small example. If you were going to build something like a bridge and wanted a bigger cantilever, I would build it this way. And this is gonna be the middle plank that I'm gonna use as the unit to lift this. And then, adding two more planks on top. And then I'm gonna add two planks here as a support. And you'll need that extra weight on top so these, these planks don't fall when you pick it up. So I'm adding two more planks here and one more plank on top and that creates a full unit of a cantilever. And then you could add, you could put that on, um, you know, a bridge base like this, and then add another cantilever there, and then, whoops, and then just start adding on top of that. So that's another example of a cantilever. When thinking about bridges, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. There's a challenge that we have called, I think it's called build a bridge. And if you place two planks here and imagine that this is the river, you can have your students challenge them to say, how can you build a bridge over this river? Um, and then you ask the questions, is it a footbridge? Are you trying to um, make it longer? Do you, what do you need? in terms of support to get that bridge um, from one side to the other. So this is just an example of a simple bridge, or you can think about um, it, what a bridge might look like with the extra support on the top like that. So giving the students a challenge on how to build a bridge is another great architecture engineering um, activity to use with cube planks. If they're building a house or a structure, they can uh, use an image to study how a house might be built and thinking about the symmetry of a building. Is it symmetrical? Is it, uh, does it use, um, with a cathedral, does it use buttresses and things like that? So uh, looking at the engineering elements of a building and helping them think through how they might build it with cubo planks. I'll show you a quick way to build a window. So using that five plank module, again, I'm going to place a plank here and a plank here as the front uh, wall or, um, yeah, the front of the building. And then I'm placing one plank upright here and here. And then depending on how big the student might want a window, you can either make it a small four pane window like this. This window's design can be used in a lot of different ways. If they're building a cathedral, a house, um, a storefront, they can just replicate this a lot of different times and kind of stack them on top of each other and make a really 
a really beautiful building. If they were thinking about building um, a church and wanted more of a rounder window or a kind that kind of curves up like this, you could put some planks on angles. The same thing can go with doors. Usually I make a door two or three plank widths wide. Um, so if I take five planks here and have one plank as the wall, I just angle three planks in so it looks like the door is opening and then add another plank there. You can always reinforce a plank with two or three more. So then when you set one on top, it, you know it's gonna be sturdier. So that can be an example of a door. If you're working with older students, uh, an exercise I love to do is showing or letting them ex study and research different buildings. So if they're particularly interested in a country, looking at their architecture and how they might build um, a structure, or maybe if you're in history and talking about um, the Colosseum or in ancient Rome, having the students try to build something that replicates that structure. So using columns and um, things like that. You could also do ancient ruins like Chichen Itza or how um, people built pyramids and thinking about, well, how do you take this rectangular plank and build something that looks like it's getting smaller and smaller? So uh, asking those questions and allowing your students to explore and uh, tr through trial and error, trying to build something that has been built before. For younger students and even older students, this is a fun activity is designing your own house or your dream house. So having them use graphing paper to draw their floor plan and then using planks as simple as maybe just laying them out like this or laying them flat to create the rooms. If they wanted to focus on just one specific room, they could think about their bedroom and then um, have them build a bed out of Kiva planks and a dresser. They can either focus on what's inside or maybe they can think about the exterior and what they want it to look like that way. So um, there are a lot of different ways that you can use this as an activity. The last activity that I think really um, connects the love of building with Kiva planks and engineering and um, thinking, thinking strategically is building your own neighborhood or cityscape. This uh, dives into the subject of urban planning and thinking about what what a city needs, um, what type of buildings, what type of road struck, uh, road design or road setup would be helpful for for a larger city or a smaller city. Or thinking about a neighborhood, you know, having the students look at the the Google Map of their school and um, and seeing how a school might be situated in a city and what would be best for that. So that's a really fun activity to have students working in teams or in a certain group and thinking through planning their own city or neighborhood. I hope those hands-on activities were helpful for you and um, we have tons more resources for you at cubaplanks.com and we have a teacher's resource there for you under the educators tab and also our social media is a great way to see how other teachers and classrooms are using their Cuba planks. So you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and of course YouTube has other great resources for um, how to more specific building tutorials. Thanks for joining me.